G'day everyone, Hobbit81 here and welcome back to Hobbit Gaming. Uh, back with Ashton Near again. I'm actually doing this as a voiceover after the fact because I was very sick when I recorded this footage and uh, it was not going to be a good experience. So I'm trying something new. I don't think I've ever done a voiceover for one of my videos. I'm actually just turning it down as I'm trying to watch it. Um, here we are on uh, Vesna. Now I may or may not have lost the footage of me <laughs> coming to Vesna. I can't remember. I was very sick at the time, like I said. Uh, but uh, here we are collecting, I believe it's methane. I hope I said that right, methane. Um, and we need that to make silicon, which is used in quite a few other later tier recipes. And I think it's also used as one of the ingredients in uh, making some of the alloys and the, the, the uh, mixed metals, I guess you'd say, and the different um, things. So it is an important step. And methane, I think, is only present on two worlds. I think it's this one and possibly Artrox, which is something we're going to uh, later, I think. So here we can see the chemistry lab, and it's two, well, one resin, one quartz, and some methane to make silicon. Um, we have also this mysterious flying ship. When my, when my little shuttle landed here, it was uh, floating in the air. So I thought I'd leave that to show you guys before I set up the landing pad. One of the quests is to set up a landing pod or uh, a landing pad or a, uh, what do you call it, a habitat thing on each planet. So this is me adding it to this planet. Um, there's something else on this planet we're going to have to come back another day and do. There's a special quest to get another vehicle. And as you know, I love all the vehicles. Um, now we've got a nice little landing pad. Uh, we can collect some of the new uh, things that we've unlocked in the missions with the rewards. Love the little RTGs, they're always a great addition. Uh, moving and haul up into tractor. I've actually got a, uh, a tractor on this planet already, I think. And Yeah, you can see we've got a little tractor and a few trailers set up, so it's a trailer, not a tractor. Uh, so they all uh, can connect. Like so. And this is one way to move around. Very handy. You can obviously put a few things on the back here. There's a bit of a uh, big bit of scrap. Uh, so yeah, you can go around and, and collect things with it. Uh, take re research samples, attach resource containers. Uh, so definitely you can start getting more and more efficient as you go along. There's a nice little uh, resin uh, drop here, which I think we're going to go visit in a moment. Uh, going to go for a bit of a drive and we're going to do the old uh, 300 times speed in a moment, which I think is always quite fun to do. I quite like doing these little clips. It's interesting when you're editing to try and work out, you know, where do you cut things, try and make it interesting. Uh, I like to include a lot of the gameplay. Um, I'm trying to do more of the grinding off screen, which I think is also a good compromise. Uh, try and keep you guys up to date on what we're doing without having to watch the entire thing. I do enjoy the sounds at high speed. I think I've just spotted uh, lithium in the distance, uh, but I get distracted by this plant here, which you've got to be careful because, as you'll see, they can give quite a good hit. If I didn't have my jetpack then, that probably would have killed me. So like, hmm, let's touch this potentially dangerous plant. And of course now I'm going to suffocate, but thanks to my hoverboard and little jetpack, we're okay. I really do like the look, the aesthetic of this game. I often call it Space Duplo because, you know, how... It was designed by, um, you know, the idea of what if a children, a child was to, uh, you know, design space travel and exploration, and it really has a fun uh, ness to it. But it's really quite deep as well. There's actually quite a lot of uh, layers in it, and um, a lot of the, the research and stuff can take quite a bit of time. Uh, these little guys are annoying. They shoot little pellets, and when they land, they kind of go pop. Uh, nothing too severe. They do have an angrier cousin on another planet, which uh, are much more volatile in their, their nature, but uh, it is part of collecting all the seeds. I do quite like the uh, collection of all the botany. Yeah, so I've spotted some lithium over there, which is um, not common on any planet. Like, it's sort of, uh, I think it's present on all planets, I 
think. Um, it kind of looks like uh, crunchy noodles or something over there. And, uh, eventually we will get uh, auto extractors which are much more efficient at pulling resources out of the ground and you know mostly automated so that plus the rail network we're going to have uh, some really cool stuff going soon. I think I realize I don't have enough uh, storage space here so we head back to the the car. I think I'm trying to make a path to get the car over here. My little tractor trailer combination. Another thing I wanted to talk about during this section was the fact that I don't think I've ever done this before and I know there are a few of you that do actually watch my videos regularly and I'm eternally grateful for that. Um, I would love it if people would leave a comment and just say what you think about the series or what you might like to see me do uh, different. Um, do you want to see me maybe uh, be better at what I said and actually keeping things tidy and neat. I am going to do a whole episode, I think, um, not the next one, but the one after that, is going to be pretty much just uh, stopping all of my projects and getting things sorted out. Another idea I had as a sort of a, uh, a sister series would be to do some stuff in creative mode where we actually try out a few things that would then be useful for the survival mode here. Uh, trying out some different sorting methods because there are quite a few different ways to do it. And I've watched quite a few videos and I've got a few of my own ideas and um, also automating things. So like we use a lot of hydrazine, which we'll be uh, using in this episode to actually eventually power our ship. And uh, you can create a personal jetpack, the little one we have there and you can see on the screen it's a disposable one so once it's empty you have to make another one and you also can't uh, do much with it you can sort of thrust a little bit and uh, sort of slow your descent if you're falling whereas the other one is much more powerful and you can actually um, fly for as long as you have fuel <laughs> here we are returning to base with a few uh, important resources Another great thing about the uh, the vehicles in this, like the, the tractor trailers and the, the, the large ones, is um, you can't take damage, or at least fall damage, while you're in them. So if you drive a, a trailer or a, one of the larger rovers off a cliff, just don't get out, like the uh, Not so true with the hoverboard. I have found out the hard way in the past that uh, the hoverboard will kill you if you land too hard. Uh, so there we are, going from Vesna back to our home of Silver always trying to find the landing spot. Uh, one of the people I used to play with um, quite a bit online in this game was always uh, confused by, I like to just sort of fly everywhere. I used so much fuel in these kind of games. I like to move quickly and play with all the transport options. So these big um, research items, particularly from other planets, uh, give you quite a few bites. We do also still have our little automated bite uh, system down in the in the cave system that gives us a little trickle of uh, points and I've used some of those points to unlock some things here that I've already got set up to print on the small printer here we have the tall storage a bit of an interesting one good for attaching lights too I still love the 3d animation uh, the 3d printing animation in this um, so that one's you know interesting I guess over here we have the next big step which is I've researched a crane and as you can see it requires silicon which requires that methane we were just collecting I think one of the other things we needed to use for I think for the large shuttle which you can definitely see in the background there required something that also required silicon uh, might have been a titanium alloy might have needed it but I've got all these prepared uh, previously and then while that's uh, printing up a, a storm there, we're going to grab the uh, tool storage in a moment. You can see the power wall up there doing quite nicely. I think I was going to make some more hydrazine perhaps. That's our two ammonium and whatever gas is on this planet. ammonia and yep I missed it then that's fairly fairly easy to make once you have a little bit of infrastructure and ammonium um, once again I think it's not the most common one but I'm um, having a good fun being automatic there uh, want you to get it set up um, that's one of the things I'd like to automate is having you know, a constant supply of 
uh, hydrazines, having an actual factory dedicated just towards that, I think it's going to be fun to design and, and make. Just go over and grab you know, a single canister or a larger one. Uh, so while that uh, continues to print, have a look in some of our research items. And definitely one of the next things are the medium batteries. We'll actually be using those later on. Technically, the small batteries apparently are better bang for your buck. But the medium ones definitely look better. So there's the tall storage. And here's the ship almost done. Oh yeah, now that is an upgrade. I think I, uh, I spare you having to try and watch me uh, navigate up to get that up there, which is probably smart. Um, but now we can upgrade and remove our little dinky little ship. Good to, to hang on to as a, in case of emergencies. But uh, we won't be needing that one anymore because we have this. Oh, heck yeah. And as you can see, it can handle quite a few um, slots there and also four um, spot items. So, you know, really, really large items will fit on it. We can use our thruster from the old ship, the hydrazine. Got a couple of spare canisters on that. Uh, as you can see, you can put in an oxygenator. Uh, getting a few more things organized here to take on our next trip. So, we're taking that down to get a bit of a refill from the hydrazine we were making. Yeah, that'd be cool to have automated. I'm also trying to think of like um, item sorters and having a train that goes around all the things and only grabs stuff from where it's supposed to. So, you know, one train that um, grabs research items and takes them to the research center, but the same train also goes and picks up fuel, drops it off. Here I am once again struggling with ammonium and, and trying to place the canister. I'm still quite happy with the setup, but I think it could be optimized. Um, I think that's the point here where I'm like, yep, we need more ammonium. Uh, we can print it from soil. So let's go and actually organize the crane, um, which is going to be used for collecting soil. <laughs> How does that make sense? doesn't really sound like it would, does it? But uh, once we attach the crane to the train, and then we're going to grab the uh, drill head here and pop that on the end, we can use this to collect soil quite a bit faster than we can sort of uh, manually. At least it seems that way. I don't actually know. I haven't done like the numbers on whether it's more efficient to do this or not. Once we unlock the large rover, then we're going to get some efficiency on um, collecting soil. That is for sure. I just love the way this thing just grows. It's an absolute abomination and I love it. It is my precious train abomination child. I must have had an idea for something else. In fact, I still have a whole heap of lithium on me. And there's a ghost crane on the uh, lock there. I uh, zinc. I think we wanted some power for this. So a uh, little bit of that and a little bit of ammonium. No, aluminium. Get my elements mixed up. Oh, zinc. Got a zinc for that. Batteries, yes. So zinc and uh, lithium. Which kind of makes sense, you know, a lot of things in this game make sense. I uh, recently listened to the audiobook of The Martian, I can't remember if I mentioned this or not, but uh, I'm talking about RTGs in there, I'm like, really? That's interesting, that's an actual thing, it's actually like a, kind of like a nuclear reactor, but without having to have all the water and stuff, it's just a bit of, um, I think a bit of plutonium or something that uh, deteriorates and produces a lot of heat, and you know, heat can be used to make electricity, so... I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I just thought it was quite interesting. And yes, I am aware that The Martian is a, is a fictitious book, but it does use a lot of good science. Uh, here I am making an extra rail cart for the train. Uh, horrible train baby continues to grow. And uh, this one's going to be for power. Make sure we've got enough uh, juice in this thing. A large RTG would be better, but I don't have uh, that unlocked, and I probably don't have the resources for it, to be honest. That should get some power from the rail line. I'm still not sure how these trains are supposed to like get their power and like I can have a whole heap of batteries and it says hey low power but it's definitely outputting enough to make it go. 
so why it sometimes goes uh, a bit flat is beyond me. And just here, I'm just noticing how the uh, the batteries, the lights always face you. So when you move around, it uh, follows you. That's a lot of power. So you think it wouldn't have any more problems, wouldn't you? Oh well. Uh, one day I'll get it worked out. So here we are on the ground, uh, hopping in the crane, and uh, I think this is the first time I've actually used it for this purpose, so this is kind of fun. You can see the soil canister on my thing uh, fills up, and then I, I really get confused for a while, and I'm still not sure if it's actually going over to the other canisters or not, to the uh, medium soil canisters. And I think I spend a bit of time trying to work that, that part out. Uh, but it's kind of like, it feels like I'm... I don't know, doing a massive dental project and I'm brushing something very large as teeth. And there is some soil in there, but I really still don't know if I'm doing it right. I think I'm here, I'm, I'm checking the different soil levels to see if it goes up. You can see the canisters there in the background, uh, the single canisters are full. So maybe they filled up first. I think I, I try something here where I flick the switch. And some of the soil moves around. This confuses me eternally, so I don't know if this is, you know, still doing it right. But uh, if you guys have played this game and have any tips on, on this to make sure that I'm doing this right, please do let me know. Like in the end, I do get quite a bit of uh, soil collected, and it's enough to make some more ammonium, which then lets me make more uh, hydrazine, which are, are of course, uh, fuel. Hydrazine was also mentioned in The Martian as a, you know, a real fuel source. <laughs> he converts it into things like oxygen and water, which was very clever of him. Um, so here we are back on the surface again, and I think we're going to go to the stuff with the snail. Yes. So a little bit of a you know segue there. We're going to be actually looking at the uh, first of the snails for us to collect, and what we need to do is put down the terrarium. And uh, excuse me if I say the wrong words here. Sometimes I say gastropod. I think they're called galactopods, something like that. Ah, uh, things are getting messy. Oh yeah, I was having some problems with the auto arm. This wasn't right, quite the right position. Um, I sort that out later on. But uh, yeah, uh, definitely why we need to do a whole episode just on uh, cleaning up things. So the terrarium needs some soil, and then usually one or two resources. So yeah, so zinc's one of them. And then I wanted a seed, and this is where I get confused and I picked the wrong plant. Here's my little uh, garden over here. It's not actually that one we need, it's one of the other ones. I'll find that out in a moment. There are also automated ways of doing that, which we'll find out later on. Uh, yeah, so wrong plant. I'm like, what? Also, you know, trying to do these things while unwell and not being able to concentrate. I want to bounce fine, not the balloon whatevers. Yeah, and these ones, there is no sort of, um, you know, friendly version of those. But that's the seed that it needs for this one. Now that's set up, and then there's still a few more steps. Here's me thinking, what's the next step? And now we have to actually collect the thing and get the horn, so we collect the reward for that part of the uh, process. Yeah. 
there's a good few uh, ones to collect there. Leave the large wind turbine for another place. Good to put on the planet when we get there. So now what we need to do is attach the horn. And it's, I, I actually missed a the prompt there that said there's no gastropod in the area. So I just moved it a little bit and then this happens. So you have to do the uh, right dance to become friends with the gastropod. I'm a bit far away here, which is why it isn't doing anything. Nope, still too far away. There, shaking his head. Like, oh, that's not the right one. It's this dance that this particular one likes. I don't actually need to do it anymore, I actually just need to um, I think activate the slug or the actual thing. I think I'm currently uh, suffocating, or about to be suffocating, so... Head back for a sec. Like, whoops. It wasn't what I meant to do. <laughs> and now he's moved over here a bit more, so I'm getting closer and closer to uh, being, killing myself. Yeah, so this is me being confused, like, hey, what do I need to do here? And then finally, befriend as an option comes up. <laughs> and here we have Sylvie, the little um, snail slug. <laughs> Whatever they are, they're, they're darn cute. This guy likes to eat um, mutant hispane seeds, and you'll see in a moment what happens when we feed them. Or well, we won't. We're going to go over here first to our Snail Research Centre. And then this part's quite cool. So yeah, a bit of a haunting sound then. If you, now if we feed them a hispane seed, he uh, produces light. So, you know, some free light down in the tunnels. You don't have to use uh, uh, a, an additional light. Um, that's, that's quite handy. Uh, each of the snails of, I'm, I'm never gonna get the name right, Galact Galactopods, Galastropods, um, has something different that they do and a different seed that they like to uh, eat. Uh, you can see our little uh, research station here, and this is where I plan to do uh, all of our research. It's not set up at the moment, and as we'll see, I don't have the extenders to be able to plug it into the power. Uh, but eventually, this is where I'm going to do research. We're also going to do uh, scrap and something else. It slips my mind at the moment, but we'll be doing that in a few episodes' time. So yeah, no power. Oh. 
uh, arriving back home here just to uh, finish up now just uh, a few more things before we end the episode I think we made some really good progress in this one having the uh, large ship is going to be very handy for going to other planets we'll be able to move a whole lot of stuff I can uh, take this soil canister here and <laughs> shuffle things around and uh, now we can produce ammonium we should have done this before uh, so that we can make more of that sweet, sweet hydrazine. Yep, and we just bypass the arm because we're only making the one thing ammonium, so that's fine. As you can see, we've got a pretty good supply, so you know, I'm not too, too worried. Um, that's going to be for our new ship and eventually for our personal jetpack as well. pop this up here so that whenever we need fuel for the rocket and when we're going to other planets it's nice to have a little uh, setup here we have everything we could possibly need uh, so that we can be flexible and take things uh, that we want to the planet so that's why I've got a few of those landing pods and stuff put it up there we can do this that's not bad and I think it's already full so we can't put any more on But I think that just about does it for this episode. Uh, I'm pretty sure the next one is... I must have a whole heap recorded, actually, because we have not even been to Artrox, which is, I'm pretty sure, the topic for next time. There's some gases that you can only get from there, so we're going to need to go in there uh, to get the things to, to move on to the next tier. Uh, it eludes me just for the moment what it was to be needed to get from there. I'm pretty sure it's one of the gases that's only available there, so we'll see that next time.